Hey everyone, thanks for watching. I am I I promise you this is going to be an extremely entertaining uh, interview. I'm, I'm interviewing a gentleman that I've been on with for five or six minutes now, and I just can't stop smiling. So uh, this is going to be a great show. So let's welcome Tim Knox to the show. How are you doing this morning, Tim? Hey, brother. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing very well. I guess it's technically not morning. It's almost two o'clock my time, five o'clock your time. So let's, let's call it late afternoon. How about that? There you go. <laughs> there you go. So why don't you, uh, Tim, introduce yourself to the audience, who you are, where you play in this great world of real estate, and we'll go from there. Sure. Uh, uh, my name is Tim Knox. I'm uh, from Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, I am the owner and managing partner of a little company called Revolved Realty Group. Uh, we are a real estate company that uh, does a lot of things traditionally. We also work with a lot of investors. We also invest ourselves. We do a lot of flips. Uh, I am diving into rental property thanks to this little book that I read called One Rental at a Time. <laughs> uh, but, uh, I'm a, uh, I'm a 30 year entrepreneur. I've been in a variety of businesses about 18 months ago. Uh, I was semi somewhat retired and my oldest daughter, Chelsea, who'd been in real estate for a long time said, Hey dad, why don't you get your license and we'll start a real estate company. And that's what we did. So, uh, we've been at 18 months. We've done a little over 32 million in sales. Uh, so not a, not a bad first year. And, uh, I work with a lot of investors. As I said, one of the things I do a lot is is kind of teach agents to work with investors and vice versa, because uh, that is a, we, we are a breed unto ourselves on both sides, as someone would say. So. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I really do think, and I, I've, tr I've spoken at one real realtor, like, you know, Hey, let's bring in an outside speaker realtor event. Yeah. And there is a, if you're a real estate agent and you have your license, I think you're a fool. If you don't at least try to understand what a true investor looks like. Now I'm not talking about the seminar junkie who goes out, asks a gazillion question and never writes an offer. I'm talking right. about the person that like owns rentals or does flips. Like clearly your business is, you know, sort of cornered that market in Huntsville because that's repeat business. I mean, there are businesses in every city across the Americas that are cash buyers or wholesalers or flippers that are doing dozens, if not several dozens a year you get in get in the way of that traffic right go have those come and they're not hard to find like title companies record this stuff you can go look them up so i i guess what do you think about that i i totally agree i i have um oh gosh i, I work with five or six out-of-town investors mm -hmm. and if you're if you're not familiar with huntsville i mean we we're not really a traditional alabama town we are North Alabama, this is where the government brought Von Braun and all the rocket scientists after World War II. Mm. So Huntsville, we've got NASA here. We've got the, the third largest population of engineers and scientists in the country. Wow. And they are saying within the next five years, we're going to be the largest city in the entire state. And so the real estate market here is booming. I mean, mm. literally a decent house at a decent price goes on the market and we've got a half dozen offers by sundown. But what's happened is Huntsville is making all of these best places to work and live lists yeah. around the country. And so I have investors from Montana, California, Virginia, uh, Delaware that have actually made contact with us and they are investing in this market. And so this is what I try to teach my agents is if you are not working with investors, you're missing out on a great piece of the pie. Because if I find a home that I think is going to fit one of my investor modes, mm -hmm. it's a phone call. And nine times out of 10, it's an offer. Yeah. So it's, it's like, it's, it's three like phone calls. from heaven for me. Yeah. I mean, if you, I mean, once here's the magic and you really just said it, I just want to hit it again. Mm -hmm. If, if when Tim understands what his buyers are looking for, and you're looking at the MLS every day, right? Your buyers are doing yeah. whatever they do all day, but you find one and say, Hey, I found one that Mike might like. And even if Mike myself says no, you probably have two or three other calls. You'll, you'll sell it in three phone calls. Yeah. And I mean, I've got a, an investor out of California. He and his wife are buying homes in all of the top 10 best places to live. Oh, wow. He has bought two new construction. That's all he buys new construction, top of the line, granite countertops, buys them. And they always rent out in these markets yeah. and they always cash flow, even though they're, you know, three, $400,000 homes. Yeah. And so anytime I see a new neighborhood popping up that meets his criteria, buddy, I'm on the phone. Hey, 
there's a there's a house here you know what i mean yeah, so yeah. but th there are different investors with different criteria one of the things we're seeing here michael is the the fbi is relocating a, a big uh branch here we've got 1800 fbi agents coming here from all over the country well they're coming from cities where you know a million dollars buys you a two-bedroom one-bath bungalow you can come here and buy the governor's mansion for a million dollars, <laughs> right? So we've, I've got these FBI agents coming in buying, you know, they'll, they'll buy their own home for a couple of hundred. They'll buy three or four rental properties. Yeah. I mean, the, the business is here if, if, you, if you know how to go out and look at it. But, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. The key to working with an investor is knowing how they think, know what they're, they're looking for. And that gives you something to go get and bring back to them that they will consider buying. Well, let's just get this out of the way now and we will absolutely sure. hit it again. Uh, I got to imagine there's probably 15 or 20 people that have listened thus far that want to get in contact with you. So let's just say it now. How can people reach out to you, call you, get in contact with you? Because there's lots of buyers that are always over my channel going, where do I go? Where do I, where, where do I go? And <laughs> you've already ratted off Huntsville. So I know they want to blow up your phone or your email. So let's get that out of the way now. Yeah, you know, our, our website is revolved.com, like the door revolved. And uh, my email is just tim at revolved.com. Telephone is 256-679-0704. And if you are interested in this market, um, I mean, I've got a packet of information that I can send you. Uh, we, are, we are one of those rare economies that very rarely do we see a lull in real estate. Yeah. And it's simply because of we, we have so much government business. Every defense contractor on the planet is here. Toyota has a big plant. Mercedes has a big plant. Google, Facebook. It's, it's kind of a weird thing to have this in Alabama. Now, if you go 20 miles south, then you run into Alabama. Let me tell you. <laughs> so but, uh, huh? this, is a, this is a very interesting market and, and a lot of investment here. Yeah, very cool. Well, do me a yeah. favor, fans. Uh, when you reach out to Tim, either by phone or email, just tell him you saw this podcast or uh, you saw the video or you listen to the podcast. I'd love to get a note from Tim in a few weeks saying, oh my God, 37 people <laughs> called me. So yeah. let's, let's figure out how many people call him and, and see if we and you know me, man, stuff. I'll brag on you. I'll get on Facebook. There we go. <laughs> well, let's keep going. So we're hitting Huntsville. Sure. Uh, you know, I have a daughter. She's, uh, she's 28. So I, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask uh, a, it sounds like she came to you and said, dad, let's do something. So kudos to you. Yep. Uh, how, how is it working with your, with your daughter? I'm, I'm just, well, curious. let me, let me say this right before I got on here with you, I got a text message from her and it says, dad, my water broke. <laughs> and literally she is at the hospital. Now she's, she's not anywhere near, but she is uh, about to deliver my first grandchild. So I, only you would keep me. <laughs> from the hospital when my firstborn is about to pop but we could have rescheduled um, <laughs> i told her i said i gotta talk to this guy i'm sorry <laughs> um no her oh you know what God. she has a really <laughs> really interesting story um chelsea started uh, she's a little over 30 years old now and she flipped her first house i think she was right out of high school she was like 18 wow. years old her grandmother had an old house and said hey I'll give you money to fix this house up if you fix it up and you sell it and we'll split the profits. Well, Chelsea, I mean, just is a heck of an entrepreneur, like her old man and her mother. And so she recruited me and all her friends. We, we went in and we did some work on the house and it sold in like one day and I, she profited something, I don't know, 15, 20 grand. Yeah. And the bug was, was there. She was bitten. So all through college, she, she worked on flip. She did real estate. When she came back here uh, from Alabama with a business degree, she immediately just started flipping houses. And so in the last, gosh, she's been doing it eight or nine years. I can't tell you how many houses she's flipped, but she even did an HGTV pilot oh, wow. that you can see on our website. If you go to Lake, it's called Fixing the Flip. Oh. Um, but she's the one that, she also had a real estate license. She was doing 30, 35 deals a year. Wow. And so- when I was kind of sitting around, I'm one of these guys, Michael, if I, I get bored easy, yeah. if it doesn't challenge me or make me money or make me, if I don't have fun. Yeah. And so I was just complaining like I'm prone to do. <laughs> and she's like, well, why don't you get your license? We'll start a company and 
you know, come work with me. Now, I think what she meant was come work for me. Right. But it's, uh, but it's worked out really well. Like I said, we've, uh, we're 18 months into this company. It's going very well. We've got 12 agents uh, working out of this office and uh, she continues to do uh, flips. We do remodels. Um, you know, one of the things she's into now is the, is actually the fixer upper model where people are buying old houses and paying her to remodel and oh, wow. renovate them. And uh, so she's doing extremely well. Chelsea, Chelsea McKinney is her name. And uh, she's McKinney. just a rock star, man. Well, when you send me your address later, I'm going to make sure I get her a book as well. And, and I'm, awesome. I'm, yeah, I'm, gr Grandpa is not at the hospital. I mean, what's I, I feel terrible now. Well, not really. Well, you know, the big point of discussion <laughs> lately is, is what's the baby going to call everybody? Ah, yes. You know, this poor kid, God love him. He's got like, you know, four grandpas and four grandmothers. And, you know, everybody has already cherry picked the good name. Ah, and so you know they're like, well, what's he going to call you? And I'm like, well, Mr. Knox is good. Or, there you go. Yeah, that's why not. Why, why <laughs> overcomplicate it? Well, you know, I'll end up being dump ball or something <laughs> stupid, but it'll be okay. He's it's the right. first grandson, so we're excited. Oh, good for you. I, I can tell you're very excited about that. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, so let's talk about it. So you open this brokerage with Chelsea. She's got some real estate experience. You're clearly a serial entrepreneur. All good stuff. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, how, how do you, you know, how do you attract business? How do you, I mean, how do you reach out to real estate investors who are probably just crushing it all day and, and prove to be a, of service to them? What, what does that yeah. look like? Well, wh one of the reasons that we grew as quickly as we did is my background was in marketing. Mm -hmm. And I have, you know, like I said, I've been a serial entrepreneur for a number of years and I was always the marketing guy. I know social media, I know YouTube. So we really hit the ground running and we do a lot of video. Hmm. And, and like you, you know, I've done interviews. We do, I've got my ride and rants where I just get in the car and talk about real estate. I do a lot of on set type stuff. And, and that was primarily our major mode of uh, marketing and advertising because really nobody here was doing it. You know, ah. we've got 34 licensed agents here who, you know, uh, just haven't gotten the, the video vibe yet. And I had it. And, so that's what's attracting us, not only a lot of attention from, you know, clients who want to list and sell, but from the investors as well. They're like, like you, I mean, I found you on YouTube, Yep. you know, they find me on YouTube. They find me, you know, I am that obnoxious Facebook guy, you know, I've got 25,000 followers on Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram. And, you know, I mean, I'm obnoxious about, about real estate. Now, what I do is I mix that in with a lot of funny stuff. I mix it in with a lot of dogs. We do dog rescue. I've got a 70 pound Labradoodle named Murphy, who's our mascot. So, nice. you know, I'm, I'm very good at, at attracting attention. And then once we have that attention, we convert it. And, and that's how I got in with, with investors is have them calling me. Uh, we've got a very active uh, real estate investment association here that we've become a part of. So, um, it's, it's literally, I mean, you know, this, it's marketing 101. You put yourself out there, you know, you'd be the loudest kid in class, you get that attention, yeah. but then you got to do something good with that attention. And, and that's what, uh, what we're doing. I actually have a number of investors here who uh, will actually list their house with me. For sure. And yeah. Investors are the cheapest guys and gals on the planet, but yeah. you know, they know that we're going to do the marketing. We're going to get it sold for them. And, uh, we just do a lot of repeat business. So again, it comes back down to how to work with investors. Yep. And one of the things that I teach also to investors is how to work with real estate agents. Oh, good point. Because it, it is a, it's a two way street. You know, it's not just us knowing what you're thinking, but it's important that the investor know number one, what we do, mm -hmm. how we do it and what value we can bring to them. Because if there's no value, there's no, no relationship. And so that's what we really focus on. And it's, it's worked out very well. Well, let's kick that rock a little bit more because okay. a lot of people that watch this channel are on the investor side. I do, you know, a few videos here and there with licensed agents specifically. Usually in the market, I focus on Fresno, just trying to give people time. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about it from what, what your level, because I, I think that is so true. What should a real estate investor, now let's, let's get rid of the seminar, sem, seminar junkies who never get a deal done. So like real investors, <laughs> but uh, they go to every damn seminar. They Come do. On. They do Give them some credit here for I, being willing no, to travel. No, exactly. 
<laughs> They've been to lots of cities and seen lots of yeah. hotels. So the, the real <laughs> investors, how should they think? Let's, let's actually flip it. Let's flip it this way, actually. Let's, assume you, let's just assume it's me. I've done hundreds of deals in California, specifically Fresno. And let's just say I was excited about Huntsville. What would you, how would you coach me to start working with a real estate agent in Huntsville? Um, you know, I know no one, right? What should right. I do? What happens? Well, I mean, the one word that always comes into play here is, is there are two words, actually. There's relationship and there's compatibility. Mm. Okay. It's very important that if, if you were to call me up and say, hey, I'm in Fresno, I'm thinking about it, investing in that market. It's very important that we get to know each other mm -hmm. and number one, like each other, because I have a role. I don't do business with people I don't like, like Amen. It's too short. but it's very important for me to know, okay, what, what is your experience level? What have you done in the past? What are you comfortable doing? What are you uncomfortable doing? You know, what are your goals? What sort of properties are you looking for? I mean, it really is the first phone call is kind of an interview process yep. because I want to get to know the investor. Now, if you're on the investor side, you need to be interviewing the agent. You know, uh, the first question I would ask is, uh, do you work with investors? And more importantly, are you an investor yourself? That, yes. Do you understand how investing works? Because the investing deals are a little different than just going finding, you know, John and Mary, a, a three, two, you know? Yeah. And so it's very important that in my mind that the real estate agent, um, you know, he doesn't have to have a large portfolio, but he at least has to know how things work. He has to know the jargon. He has to know the structure of the deal. So, you know, what I would do is I would just interview that agent mm -hmm. and be very upfront. Here's what I'm looking for. Here's my goals. Here's what I need from you. And, you know, the most important thing that I think from both sides is there has to be respect. You know, I, I've had investors call me up and, and, and really want to treat me as their employee here on the ground and tell me what to do. Mm. And, you know, it, it just wasn't a good fit. So it comes down to respect. I respect you as an investor. Mm -hmm. You respect me as the real estate guy on this end. And, and we'll get along great. But there have to be those shared goals. Yeah. And, you know, if I'm too busy to deal with you, I should respect you enough to say, I'm just too busy. Yeah. I can't help you. But here is someone that I have confidence in and can refer you to. A lot of times I think that, you know, real estate agents just want, because it is, you know, we live on commission. We want every deal we can get. And there is such thing as, as overflowing your pipe. Mm -hmm. meaning you fill that pipe too much. Do you get a nice clog there yeah. and nothing is getting done and you're not doing a service to your clients. So long answer to a short question is interview each other, ask the questions, make sure that the, the goals are clear on both sides and mm -hmm. then be comfortable and compatible. Yeah. Make I think sense? there's, Oh, for sure. I, I, if I were asked a similar question for me, the two things you need to consider one is sort of time and the other is service level. You could throw yeah. vocabulary around whatever that is, mm -hmm. but you know, time being it's okay. How much time do I have to commit to this? What are, what are our expectations? Do we set up a call every, you know, Friday at two or whatever it is right. to, to talk about what's going on? Because if you're truly an investor, it's more than one and done, right? It's, I'm going to learn the market. You're going to help me learn yep. the market. I'm going to make 17 <laughs> offers. I'm going to buy three and then I'm just going to keep rolling in Huntsville. Uh, yeah. So there's that. And then there's the service level agreement and that's the, Okay. If I find something online, I could call you and I should expect to have an offer or feedback back in whatever that is, 24, 48. Right. Just yep. get the agreement, right? Worst mm -hmm. thing I've seen is investors, this, is, this comes back. Investors go, well, the agent's not operating in my time frame. Well, did you tell them what your time frame was? <laughs> yeah. And then, the, and then agents go, well, he's sending me too many listings and I can't do, well, did you tell him what, you know, what? would be okay. Right. Yeah. You just, just I talk. think you have, you have to establish those parameters because I've actually talked to investors who say, Hey, I, I just want you to throw offers at everything from here to here. Yeah. And you know what? I mean, and, and I'm happy to make reasonable offers, but in this town, you know, it's a very small town. Yeah. When you, at the end of the day, if you become known as an agent who just lowballs every offer that comes up in the MLS every day, mm -hmm. the other agents here are eventually not going to take you seriously. Yeah. And so, you know, rather than saying, Hey, I want you to, 
to throw spaghetti against the wall and make a 50% offer every time something comes on. <laughs> Give me some parameters. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where are we from, you know, from here to here? What's your, you know, what's, what's your formula? Everybody and their mother has a formula now. Yes. Except, you know, it has to be this percentage to do this percentage to make this percentage. Yep. So, you know, at least, and that's one of the things I always say, we, we're, I'm a great realtor, but I'm a lousy mind reader. <laughs> Tell me what you want and, and that's what we will go get. But it just, you know, just saying, hey, just make an, a 50% offer on everything that comes in the MLS. Sorry, guy, I'm too busy for that. Yeah, I wouldn't, I would I'd refer I, you to an agent. I don't particularly. <laughs> that's right. Who, who's the competition annoying yeah. me? Let me give you That's their phone number. referral for you. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. You'll love this guy. Yeah. So um, let's talk a little bit about, a little bit more about Huntsville. Cause again, I think your phone's going to blow up or your email's going to blow up. So um, what's the average median price? I have no idea. Is it like one? The, the average median price is right around 200,000. Oh, okay. 200. Okay. Um, but we, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a, a very broad market because you know the the average neighborhood here 200 to 250 is about the sweet spot okay. but we have a lot of executives here okay so you know right right now i've got i've got a property that's on top of a mountain 56 acres for 1.3 million and i mean that's here that's that's pretty top of the market yeah. but there's a very healthy luxury market here uh, most of the rentals that I see, other than my guy in California who buys the the new construction, mm -hmm. anywhere in the 150 to 185 is a very sweet spot for rentals. Yeah, because so rents, especially here in Madison, they go from you know 1,300 on the low end up to three grand, you know, and and above. So right, so, it's so let's play with. Market. Yeah. So let let's let's kick that a little bit more because sure. what I teach my students is yield. And if we're not careful, we can, we can get people too excited because some of those numbers I'm sure don't tie together. So yeah. let's, let's talk about the 150 to 185 house. Would, would you mm -hmm. say three bedrooms, two bath, one single story, 1400 square feet kind of thing? Yeah, that, that's very typical of what that would be. You okay. know, there are, it, a lot of it here has to do with location. For example, For Huntsville sure. is, is the main city where all of the, the business and everything is. Well, then you've got a little town called Madison, which is very much the bedroom community of Huntsville now. Mm. And back, I grew up here 30, 40 years ago. There was nothing in Madison. Now Madison is just full. Okay. I mean, it's, it's, we've got million dollar neighborhoods out here, you know, but then right across the street from a, from a trailer park. Welcome right. to Alabama. What are you going to do? <laughs> but there is a very broad range, but by and large, the rental markets are, are in that, you know, three bedroom, two bath, 14, 1500 square feet, you know, um, you know, small, nice fenced in yard. The big draw here is the school district. We have the okay. number one school district in the state. And that's really what has driven our real estate market here. And, and that's like, specifically to Madison. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. If, if you're a, a mom and dad with some little kids, you're, you're going to look in Madison. All and right. uh, you know, the, the bad thing is Madison's full. <laughs> you know, there, there's no new construction, but the good news is in the, in the circle around Madison and Huntsville, it's all new construction and just going like gangbusters. Wow. So there's so much opportunity here, um, not just, you know, for the rental market in that range, yeah. but there's a lot of high end construction and that sort of thing going here. And, and that's, that's good. You know, it's yeah. uh, well, construction it's, brings a lot of jobs. I mean, that's what people don't really realize. That's well, it really does. And that's it. I mean, the, the economy here is just insane. And, yeah. uh, you know, honestly, they, they can't build them fast enough here. Yeah. So, so and you know, and, and then you've got cities like, uh, about 20 miles from here, there's a city called Decatur hmm. and it's very much, it's an industrial town. And the last statistic I heard was 60% of the property in Decatur was rental property. Hmm. Wow. So that means that 60% who live in this city are renters. And I know investors now they're, these houses are, you know, they're smaller, they're 50, 60,000. Yeah. But Probably two, one, three ones making, kind of stuff. Making a fortune over there. Oh yeah. 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 You know, you don't have the rent as high, Yeah. but the real estate is a lot cheaper and the demand is actually higher. Yeah. So let's round this is, out. It is a different level. Yeah. So let's round this out. I don't know the, that sure. we've painted the full picture yet. So, Three bedroom, two bath, uh, 1,400 square feet in the 150 to 185 range. Just, mm -hmm. just ballpark it. How many 
uh, I guess I'll call them listings, uh, available inventory, would you think are in that kind of range, 150 to 185, three twos today? Like, are we talking dozens, five, no, 50? No, no, we're, we're, we're talking way more than that. Okay. I mean, there are, and again, given the, the area here that we mm -hmm. serve, you know, Huntsville, Madison, Decatur, there are a lot of little pockets. I mean, there, there are probably hundreds in that range. Okay. All right. So we're, yeah. so it's a so, big market. Yeah. All right. So the final yeah, question it's, it's is a good size market it really well, is. So rents would be for something like that because it's not all the, I'm guessing it's not all the way up to three grand. No, like for example, I just, uh, I've got a rental that I just did in Madison. It's, it's 1600 square feet. It's a three, two, okay. and it will rent all day long from 15, 1600 a month. Okay. So you're right around the 1% rule close. Yeah. Right, yeah, a little over, yeah. a little under. And if you buy right, you can be a little above that, but yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's frankly better than most markets today, mm -hmm. right? The market's been going up for 12 years straight or whatever it is. Yeah. Most markets don't have the 1% rule. Most, most markets don't have all the other goodness that Huntsville has, right? right? Hunts, Huntsville's, at least the signs appear to be going up. You, you have, even if the economy dips, I think Huntsville is like, you know, it's got a run, enough runway enough in the spot pop pipeline to keep it going at least. Oh yeah. You know. With it, without a doubt. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that, that's pretty cool. So you have plenty of appreciation coming ahead. Uh, actually, I don't know this question. So I'll just ask when, you know, California being very tenant friendly, Texas being, being very landlord friendly, where does Alabama fall in that scheme? Well, I think Alabama is certainly not as liberal as California. I <laughs> well, mean, if you, that'd if be you, hard. If you, if you, if, <laughs> What if you if you drive by a house and glance over, you got squatters rights in California, right? <laughs> wow, you got to park. Um, in the, you got to park there. That, you got to park. Yeah, you, you do. But uh, no, Alabama is. Uh, you know, they they have certain rights, but not anything as as crazy as that. You know, we we still have to. If you want to get them out, you have to go through the eviction process. But you know, it's uh, Alabama. I think really is more heavily on the owner's side than it okay. is the tenant side. Yeah. All right. So we'll put them somewhere in the middle, which is hmm. wonderful. A, a lot of yeah. people that watch this are from California. They're like, oh my God, great. Um, <laughs> I guess the one thing, again, because I have looked at other states over the years, are there any gotchas? And what I mean by that, for example, is I'll talk about Texas again. One of the things that I saw in Texas that caused me to say no after spending 10 grand or whatever on flights is their property taxes on investment homes are reset every year. Yeah. And what has happened you know, from the time I was considering it to now is people are actually losing investment homes because the city has ratcheted up property taxes and squeezed all the cash flow out. Mm -hmm. Are there any kind of gotchas like that in Huntsville? Not really. I mean, the property taxes here are, I, I think, pretty low. Okay. Um, you know, there's, there's not a lot of, uh, there's not an annual upping of the taxes here. Okay. Because this is Alabama, we'll kick your butt. I mean, come on now. <laughs> You know, yeah. what I mean, they, and uh, I mean, to get any kind of tax pass here is uh, it's like pulling happen. teeth. We can't get a lottery because good Christians don't gamble. They drive to the Tennessee line to buy their ticket. Oh, of course. But of course. Uh, oh yeah, but uh, no, they, they, there are no gotchas here. I mean, it's really a very I I think, and there may be people that disagree, but uh, I think it's a very a very fair market. The governments here are are very fair. They don't really nickel and dime you to death, especially on the property taxes. Awesome. And and they're they're they've been very reasonable. I, I haven't heard anything to the contrary. Cool. Of course, cool. everybody hates to pay taxes. So. Oh, of course, it's it's always too high. I mean, you ask somebody <laughs> paying taxes, the answer yeah. is too high. But uh, I know you weren't in this business back then, but I'm going to ask anyway. So do you remember back in like 2010, the depths of the recession? I where yeah. where would these if and if you don't know it's fine if you want to guess fine where would where do you think these houses would have been valued at these 150 to 185s we've sort of pegged would they have been like 80 grand 60 I, you know i don't know if they would have been that much i mean we were we were hit by that market here mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me but we're we're very we're not hit hard as the rest of the country simply right. because of our economy okay now one thing that did happen here is people that that bought houses in 08 and 09 at the top of the market, you know, here we are 10 years later and their houses have not appreciated as much ah. as they think they should. Okay. You know, I see, I, I had a client, he bought a house top of the market, like 459 uh, in 2009. And we go to sell it this year, 10 years later. And it's really about still worth that. So yeah. if anything, it wasn't really a dip. It was just kind of a, put on hold 
almost. Okay. You know what I mean? It was a stagnation of growth. Okay. And so, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a hard pill for a lot of folks to swear or to swallow because they bought a house here 10 years ago and it's about right here now. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's the big thing. Now folks who didn't buy at the top of the market, you know, they're great. They're fine. They, they didn't experience that. Yeah. Do you have any it's, idea what uh, that 460 or 459 house would have been at the bottom of the market? Are we, or do we thinking it's always 459? You know, I, I, don't, I don't know what it would have been. I know they that's bought fine. it and like I said, in 08, 09, it might've gone down to maybe, I don't know, 400, 420. I mean, they, oh, okay. they never dipped that much. Okay. They just stopped appreciating. Gotcha. And for a, a short amount of time, they stopped selling. One of the things, again, that's unique about this market is we have uh, the arsenal here. We have NASA. We have all this business here. And there's always a constant flow of, of folks moving here. Oh, yes. uh, I have a friend who's a realtor. She somehow managed to get the, the relocation contract for like Toyota, who is moving here. Mm. <clears throat> I think what it was is she speaks fluent Korean. Ah. And so all she does is find homes for executives of Toyota. There you go. And is making a mint. I'm sure. And so there's there's always been this constant influx. The military base is here. So there's always soldiers coming in and out. So this has been a very unique market. It didn't so much as dip. It just kind of stopped. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if we so if, if real estate kind of flattened for a decade, which is fine, it's better than what I experienced in California, right? Sure. Lost sixty percent. Peak to trough, trough to peak. Um, you know, so it could have really hurt if you had to sell at the bottom. Thankfully, we did not. Yeah. Um, what What is? I, I'm guessing. I'm guessing. I'm guessing unemployment is ridiculously low in Huntsville compared to where it's it been historically. Yeah. It is. Yeah. yeah. So. And and the yeah. other thing to remember here is the, <clears throat> excuse me, because of the population, the high tech, the engineers, the scientists. The you know that sort of thing. The median income here is very high. And what would and, that be? Very yeah, high. Would like yeah, fifty, and, and, sixty. Oh, more more than that. More into the eighties. I believe. Oh, really? Last time I looked. Yeah. Okay. Because you've got you've got you know uh, uh, first year engineers coming here making seventy five, eighty thousand dollars a year. There you go. And so that that is is very high. The other thing that's really cool is when you have this economy, the the businesses flourish. Sure. There's restaurants, there's all of these retail spots. So really, if, if you want a job here, you, you can have a job. You know, I mean, there's just so much going on here as far as, you know, the, the support businesses and the ancillary businesses that, that support all these engineers and these scientists and that sort of thing. So yeah, the, the unemployment rate is very low. Cost of living here is very low. Yeah. Or not. yeah. yeah. So it's, it's a really good place. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's growing. Yeah. Very cool. So, uh, you know, again, a lot of people, I, I know this is going to happen. A lot of people are going to reach out and call you. So let's try to answer some of their questions first. Sure. Um, one thing they might ask you if they're following my channel for any length of time, is there any parts of Huntsville that are like a non-starter for an out-of-town investor, right? It's a little too dicey. It hasn't gentrified yet. Don't look there because right. I don't yeah. want to go into realtor and typing in Huntsville and think everything is good. Yeah. I mean, there, there's, there's always going to be that yeah. part of town. Yes. And it's not that it is a less desirable place to live. No. It just, it, it really, it's, it's very interesting here. Before Madison became, you know, the big deal that it is now when it was just Huntsville, Huntsville was kind of split in two. You had North Huntsville, you had South Huntsville. Okay. The, the arsenal was in South Huntsville. So that's where all of those engineers and, and rocket scientists tend to, to go. Okay. So traditionally, since the 1950s, South Huntsville was, it's where all the rich folks live. Okay. You know, the normal people were above the, <laughs> the, the North line here, you know, and, and it, it is like that today. Now, though, many years later, uh, Madison has become, you know, the, the bedroom community and South Huntsville. Now the homes there are aging Sure. They're not, it's not the, the, you know, the high dollar Mecca that it once was. So it's moved this pocket out to Madison. But the cool thing about it here is, you know, if I, I like to invest in places that I wouldn't mind living. There you go. And that really is most of this area. But again, the, the Northern part of town just hasn't gotten the attention mm -hmm. that a lot of the other parts of town uh, got. The money was not there. Sure. So the Northern part, 
uh, is, is a little less desirable. But that being said, once you get past the northern part into what used to be the country, there's so much new construction going on out there because everything else is full. Mm -hmm. And so I think what's going to happen is that's going to pull that north part of town up. And so it might not be a bad place to invest over the next few years because it is going to start to come back. We're seeing this a lot in, uh, we have a part of town, it's, it's the old downtown area. Mm -hmm. And it was two bedroom, one bungalows. They were government houses, I think, that were built for all of the arsenal workers who weren't engineers. Okay. Uh, and these were the old two bedroom, one bath bungalows, 800 square feet. I mean, the ceiling, <laughs> you know, if you're, if you're six, two, you're not coming in this house. Wow. But what we're seeing there now is people are just buying those up, knocking them down and putting up two and $300,000 houses yeah. in, in their stead. I did one a while back. It was a little, the, on this side of the street were all these little two bedroom, one bath bungalows. On that side of the street were these big new three twos. So they're starting to recycle the land here mm -hmm. simply because, it, at least in Huntsville and Madison, there's not a lot of empty land to build on. Yeah. So they're really starting to recycle. The last time I looked in the MLS, there were four available lots to build on in the city of Madison. And they were <laughs> four. Four. <laughs> four. <laughs> And they were, you know, like 150 grand for a, you know, a quarter acre. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. But they're just, they're not making any more land. So the other pockets are starting to reuse it and that, that will bring it back. Oh, and there's no question. And I think, again, people watching this or listening to it, depending if they're on video or audio, they're going to have to think, do I want easier management, meaning going, paying a little bit more, getting less mm -hmm. of a yield or a return? Or do they want to roll the dice a little bit, maybe suffer a year or two of excess pain or maybe not pain is the wrong word, uh, turn maybe as, as mm -hmm. that part of town just gets swarmed because you can see it. I can see it happening. I'm not even there. Right. So, yeah. It's going to happen. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. it's love. Yeah. Money, money chases money. So it's just going to swarm that little, <laughs> that little area. So very, very cool. What else should a listener know about Huntsville, right? Brag on Huntsville a little bit more. Um, well, you know, we are, again, uh, just at the top of every list that comes out nationally, best places to live, best places to work, best places to start a business, uh, best place to raise your kids, you know, and, and it, it just keeps growing. And a lot of that, and I attribute this to the leadership here, the mayor, Tommy Battle, the mayor of Huntsville, Paul Finley, the mayor of Madison, really worked hand in hand. And the big thing here for years has been economic development. Mm -hmm. Let's see who can we bring here, and and they've just done a hell of a job because, like I said, you they not only have the defense, the military, the NASA, all of that stuff. Uh, you know, we've got a big scientific community here. We've got Hudson Alpha, which is one of the uh, the world's foremost uh, you know genome testing facilities. Is here. Um, it's just a very uh, it's it's just there's growth everywhere. Yeah. You know. And because of this economic growth, you have all this residential housing growth that is just, uh, you know, uh, people are buying, the developers are buying up farmland, you know, putting in two or 300 houses, you know, there's uh, a lot of retail going in. So, you know, we are one of those rare pockets that really, I don't want to say we're immune to everything that goes on in the country, but it takes it a while to get here. And by the time it does, we've already done something else. <laughs> so, you know, it's uh, for, to be in the heart of the South, we're some pretty smart folks here. There you and, go. Uh, they probably moved here from up North, I would imagine. But, oh, you know, yeah, uh, they're local you know. board. Come on. <laughs> they're locals. It's all good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So let's, let's brag on Tim a little bit in Revolve, because again, I think you're going to get some phone calls. Make sure you again, give your email and phone number, because uh, if they're still listening, they're going to be calling you. Sure. Yeah. Tim at revolved.com, uh, 256-679-0704. I'm not hard to find. Just type me in Google and up I pop. There you go. Well, let's brag on the company again. How many agents and listings? Because again, we're, I'm going to try to double that for you by the end of the year. Let's, hey, let's have some. I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. <laughs> um, we, have, we have 12 agents now. Uh, we've done 100 and I think 20 listings in the last year or so. Uh, then we've probably had, I've had 18 sides on the buy side myself, but we probably have had 40 or 50 more. We're, we're pretty productive. And so uh, again, the big thing with us, I think we're, we have to be the fastest growing little boutique agency in town because 
you know, we, we have done a lot of business. We've got a lot of expertise here. You know, for example, my, my broker, Jeff Sandridge, he's been working with investors for, for many years. He's done wholesaling. We've got my daughter, Chelsea, who is still in labor, uh, <laughs> who, you know, her background is design. She had an HGTV pilot. She does these amazing flips. And then I've got some of the best agents in the business. And right. uh, we all work very, very hard, but we have a good time. But we're, uh, we've been really successful at what we do. And, and we take it personally. You know, there are a lot of agencies now that have this, you know, if, if I come out and list your house, once you sign the document, you never see me again because I've handed you off to, you know, my four or five assistants and I don't even show up at closing. Yeah. To me, that's insanity. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, it works for some, but, you know, I, I hold my client's hand the entire way. You know, they got my cell phone number. I had a client call me once, 1130 at night, sitting on his front porch, had too much to drink, locked his keys in the car and wanted to know how to get in the lockbox. Yeah, I'll yeah. be right there. Uh, you know, I mean, that's the kind of service that, that we really provide. And, and I think that's why, you know, we've had the success that we've done. But again, we're very good at on the marketing side. We can get them, we can get them sold. So very yeah. cool. Very cool. Well, I won't hold you from uh, getting to the hospital and seeing your new addition. You're, <laughs> can I, you're can I brag on you for a minute? Oh yeah, of course. Can, they, can I brag on you for a oh, minute? Of because I, I, you know, I'm one of those guys when I get interested in something, you know, I'm an old writer, I'm an old YouTuber. So I go out and that's where I do my research. And, and you know, I, I was interested in, in buying rental property myself because I dealt with it so much, but I, I never, I never really thought of it. You know, we did flips, that sort of thing. And so then I started thinking, you know, what would be a great retirement plan for the old man here? <laughs> you know, I don't ever plan to retire, but five, 10 years down the road, if I finally want to go, I'm out of here. Yeah. What better than buy and hold real estate? And that's where I found you, sir. And I ordered your book and I've got to brag on you because I have read every book on the topic and you're the only one that I've ever taken a selfie with. <laughs> and, you know, and I, I, since I read your book, I've, I've got three properties now. My, you know, I don't really have a formula other than does it make sense? And it's yeah. not an alligator. There you go. I'm, I'm good. So, you know, what I, I do is I look for, for, for good, decent houses in Madison that I can get at a fair price, yeah. put a little bit of money in it, turn them into rentals. I don't have to feed them as long as they're cash flowing and paying for the property manager you know, five, 10 years down the road, I'll cash them in or I'll just live off the cash flow. And so I, I attribute that to you. Your head is just growing <laughs> by the minute. But the one thing I really, and here, and this is the last thing I say, your book is not just one of these, you know, technical manuals, point A to point B. Yours, uh, the reason it resonated with me is it's a story. Yeah. That's it's your great. story. It's yeah. how you did things. It's, you know, warts and all. And, yeah. and that really just resonated with me. And I have to tell you, uh, you are the reason that I now own these three properties. So if That's anything goes awesome. wrong, you're the guy I'm going to blame. <laughs> but <laughs> but just, just a great book. I, I recommend One Rental at a Time to everybody. Oh, that, great that, book. Good That's job. great, Tim. I, I appreciate that. Uh, it was... Um, it was a lot of fun to write. It was, it was kind of revisiting those 15 years. Cause again, it is, it's our story. Uh, yeah. wart, warts and all uh, the good and the bad. I didn't hide anything. You know, some things worked. Some well, the cool didn't. thing is after, you know, watching your videos, as I read the book, I could hear your voice. Yeah. I could hear you telling me the story. And I think that's why it resonated with me. So very, very I, cool. I like it. I, I recommend it heartily. Oh, I appreciate that. I really do. Well, again, I'll let you get to uh, being a grandfather. That's pretty awesome. All right. Yeah, it's going to be good. Uh, I, again, folks, when you reach out to him, do me a favor. Tell him uh, you're, you're reaching out because you heard this uh, or Mike Zuber, however you want to do it. I just love to hear in a couple of weeks how many people reached out. So have a great day and thank you so much, Tim. All right, buddy. Have a good one. You too.